Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. I'm the trash. <laughs> I'm the treasure. Today we're doing another Patreon request. This is requested by Katie Roberts Ambrose and she would like us to tackle Beyond the Door. 1974. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Again, we are drinking Slaughtered Lamb English Bitter. All right. This movie is directed by a video of Sonatis, and he has directed such classics as Tentacles, yeah. The Visitor, and Piranha 2. Mm. Juliet Marion Mills is in this. Gabriel Lavia is in this too. He was in Deep Red and Inferno. Click the link above. We did that one. Richard Johnson is in this, and he's in the classic zombie movie, Zombie. <laughs> or Zombie 2 <laughs> or Zombie Flesh Eaters. Beyond the Door starts off with this weird kind of ritual happening. There's all these candles and there's this woman strapped to this glowing bed thing and <laughs> some superimposed face. Yeah, this is superimposed <laughs> bearded guys on this woman. Voice is talking to this guy, telling him if, if he's got to save his own life, he's got to make sure that this baby is born into the world. This bearded guy just driving down this highway, a car goes over the cliff, and it just freeze frames. We then get introduced to the main characters of this movie, Jessica and Robert. They're a couple, and Robert's this music producer, shows him in his studio, being yeah. an asshole to all yeah. the musicians. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, cut, cut. Quarter note break there, quarter note break. It goes ta 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 Just shows these musicians are like, yeah. Fuck you. It's like, yeah, baby, never had to play a 36 bar solo on my tool. Jessica picks up Robert from the recording studio and he tries hopping into the car like some action hero. Yeah. We kind of find out about this family dynamic a little bit. Kids, you find out, are complete assholes. <laughs> but the daughter's like, hey, you listen to this shit they're saying? What a bunch of crap. What's your nickname for him again? Asshole. <laughs> My fucking little bastard. And the dad's all... Says nothing. Yeah, like, like, calling him an asshole. And everything. <laughs> Jessica and Robert go out for dinner. She tells him, "Well, she's pregnant with baby number three. She goes to the doctor and finds out she's actually way more ahead than she thought she was. She's like three months pregnant. Robert loves his fish. His one passion besides music is this fish <laughs> tank that he has. His aquarium. She smashes his aquarium with his ashtray." She wakes up in the middle of the night and just starts floating yeah. for some reason. Yeah, she's all levitating. <laughs> all these weird sort of paranormal things start happening around the house. The towels start on fire for no reason. <laughs> the dad wants to get into the room to find out what's going on. The door's locked and the girl won't let him in. And the girl's like, hey man. Cool <laughs> that chime, brother. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> she lets the dad in. He's like... Why didn't you let me in, you idiot? <laughs> Calling it his own daughter an idiot? The mother comes in and starts kissing the boy and everything and like... Making out with him practically. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I think it's a little weird, like a little unsettling. All this weird stuff is happening and it's making Jessica very uneasy about this pregnancy and she goes to the doctor and she wants an abortion. The doctor, however won't let her because she's too far along now. And there's this bearded guy too that is following them in the city whenever they go out shopping and stuff like that. He actually saves Robert from getting hit by a bus. He tells Robert that he knows what's going on. She has to see this pregnancy through and that he wants to be there during this whole process. Whoa, who the fuck are you? What the <laughs> yeah. fuck is this all about? He all lets him into the house, yeah. a stranger and everything. <laughs> Jessica is acting very strange and she's almost full on possessed now. Lying in bed and sitting up and turning her head around and shit. And Puking you know, up the spinach shit yeah. and everything. <laughs> that green shit. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! Get out! Robert has had enough and he starts to dig into Jessica's past and it turns out that Jessica is somehow linked with this bearded guy that keeps following them around the city and that wants to be involved with this pregnancy and the, the birth. And that's where we're going to end the plot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
fucking ridiculous. If you want to see what's going to happen next with this cast of characters and whatever's happening with Jessica and the baby, keep watching Beyond the Door. So if it isn't obvious to you from the description of the movie and even by the clips we've been showing, this movie was branded instantly as a bad Italian <laughs> exorcist knockoff. <laughs> So much so that they actually got sued by Warner Brothers, and they got in a lot of shit. They actually had to give up a lot of their profits. We could make a better Exorcist ripoff. Thank you for coming, Father. Can I interest you in a brandy? My liver tells me I shouldn't, but God, I'll take the whole bottle. Drunkard! Father Davy Cross. It's an honor to meet you, Father. I need you to go to the liquor store for me. I need a 2 4 of beer, a box of wine, and a bottle of whiskey. The large one. Are you sure you shouldn't sober up first, Father? Why? You're not drinking, Davy. I've been on the wagon for ten years. May God help you. Why don't you drink some water, you cocksucker motherfucking drunk? It is booze that gives me my power. <laughs> it is whiskey that commands you. It is vodka that commands you. It is beer that commands you. It burns! It burns! The response, Davy. I, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. None of this stuff is in the Bible. Your mother drinks Bud Light in hell. The power of Christ compels you! The, the power of Christ compels you! The, the power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! You're drinking too much, Father! The power of Christ compels you! Why don't you drink, Davy? Just take one for the road. I'm on the wagon! I'm sober! Father Davy Cross, you're under arrest for child abuse and killing this old man. Ugh. I need a drink. I'd go even further to saying it's more than a bad exorcist knockoff. It's an exorcist and the omen and Rosemary's baby knockoff all shoved into one movie. Is it trash or treasure? Let's start off with the treasure. The theme song for the movie is pretty cool. Like it's got this twangy super 70s theme. <laughs> Bargain with the devil, you know, and the, the lyrics are really wicked actually. And it sort of draws you into the movie because the lyrics for the song sort of explain kind of yeah. what the movie's about, it right? Reflects the movie. Yeah. yeah. The production value of this movie's not bad. It looks good. It's a good looking movie. It's shot pretty well. The effects for the most part are pretty good. One scene where the kids are being terrorized and there's all that light coming out of the floorboards and everything's rocking back and forth. Like it's a good looking scene. It's a good looking movie. And the effects work pretty well. That is about all. That will lead us to the trash part of the movie. The characters for this movie, they leave so <laughs> much to desire. There's no one character you like in this movie. <laughs> you don't like the dad, Robert, because he's kind of an asshole. You don't like the kids because they're assholes. assholes. You don't have enough time to even like Jessica before she starts turning demonic. Yeah, and then by that point, she's an asshole, asshole too. too. Yeah, so... <laughs> Everybody's an asshole. That beard guy shows up. He's an asshole. Like... <laughs> and there's no character <laughs> development in this movie at all. Everything is just stagnant. What you see in the beginning of the movie is basically what you get throughout the whole yeah. movie to the end. The dubbing. Is horrible. The dubbing for this movie is, oh my god. Well, first of all, the kids is obviously these like 
40-year-old adults doing the voice for the kids, not even trying to sound like kids. Yeah. Hey, man, you're in for a real bad trip, kid. Yeah. And all they're talking to your, like, little brother like that? <laughs> like, you're... What the fuck? And all the dialogue is fucking horrible. It doesn't move the story or the characters forward whatsoever. It's just useless talking, pointless dribble. And the plot for this movie ultimately makes no sense too. So you have this ritual thing going on and this demon wants to be born through this woman. Why draw that much attention to yourself if the ultimate goal is to be born? born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> This plot is so convoluted. It tries to be smart and interesting and different, but it just ends up being a mess. It's just a quagmire. The movie's almost two hours long. It doesn't need to be that long whatsoever. There's that one scene where Roberts is walking through the streets. Yeah. And these musicians, this guy playing this flute, starts following him and like, yeah. like Three minutes long of these musicians following. Yeah, it, Why? <laughs> is it supposed to? Is it supposed to mean that he has a presence yeah. that people are noticing or something? That what? Well, it, it doesn't add anything to the characters or the development of the fucking movie. There's so many scenes. It's like, would you please stop talking? Just shut up and get on with something that moves things forward. Yeah. The dialogue that the demon keeps saying, oh, who are you? Yeah. Why are you even asking? Yeah. Why does the demon care? Who are you? Doesn't yeah. matter. It just wants to be born. Exactly. Don't ask. <laughs> so just shut your mouth. <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> and just be born. Why cause all this drama and yeah. ruckus? And the fact that nothing about this movie is original whatsoever. Exorcist ripoff near the end where she's full-on possessed and before that there's all these haunting scenes Which is like pretty standard haunting the chair rocking mm -hmm. back and forth Obviously like a Rosemary's baby type thing. It doesn't bring anything new to the, to the table whatsoever So beyond the door is it trash or treasure? Uh, it is trash <laughs> pure garbage <laughs> I'm sorry, Katie, if you thought we'd like this movie, I'm not sure, or if you expected us to shit all over it, then I guess that's exactly what you <laughs> wanted, because this movie is just the most boring piece of shit. It's tough to get through. It, it's slow. Sadly, I had seen this movie before, too, so when I rewatched it for this, I was able to fast forward through a lot of parts. It's yeah. like, okay, fuck, I know nothing happens here. Yeah. Let's move it along. I had not seen it before, and when I sat through it, it was I like, warned you, too. Uh... I was like, you're in for a real trip, man. <laughs> yeah, you're in for a trip, brother. <laughs> It was tough. I, this is not a movie I'll ever watch ever again. It's not so bad it's good, it's just boring and bad. Taking snippets from other movies and patching them together <laughs> yeah. just to try and make money on the back of these other good selling movies. At all costs, please avoid Beyond the Door. <laughs> Don't waste your time on almost two hours of complete nonsense. We wasted our lives. Don't waste yours. <laughs> And until next time, keep drinking.